people are trying to get this situated. So uh, people are still coming in. Please find a seat. I want to thank you all for coming today, October 4th, 2015. This is a special lecture by a good friend of mine, uh, Professor Barge from the College of New Age, Jennifer Harris. And Jennifer has uh, been knowing about this topic for quite some time. She has been uh, my introduction to Latin America, really, and what has become my lifelong obsession at this point. But uh, Jennifer comes to us from uh, Chicago. And she has uh, gotten her Master's of Fine Arts degree from the School of the Art Institute in Chicago. Uh, she's a Master in Fresco Painting, and she studied at the Seri Academia in Italy, as well as done work at St. John's College in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Um, Jennifer has also been uh, co-director of Oxbow, which is part of the School of the Art Institute's programs. And um, she's been um, an award winner <laughs> in many, many areas. But what I've always loved about Jennifer is her willing and giving spirit of communication as a teacher. She's always been researching, seeking, inquiring, trying to find out more information to impart to her students, and has built up quite a wonderful following of loyal um, devotees of art. Um, I'm really pleased to have her come speak about a topic that is near and dear to my heart, on the subject of milagros, which are little miracles. And she will tell you the diverse history, although it's very prevalent in Latin American art and Mexican culture, it certainly doesn't start yet. So without further ado, I'll let you finish. Um, please let me know if I'm talking too loud, <laughs> because I'm used to just speaking without a microphone. Is this okay? Yeah, that's good. All right. Um, good afternoon, everybody. I want to say I'm completely intimidated. Um, this room is filled with some amazing art historians who I very much admire. And so right now I feel like I should be up here telling you how to draw a nose. I don't know anything else, right? But um, I'm happy to try to give a lecture on Milagros, and so please be patient with me. Um, I want to start with a couple of personal notes in here. First of all, I want to make an announcement. Um, we have an exhibition at the College of DuPage that opens this Wednesday. And we do not have a very nice gallery there for our students anymore. We've been kind of shoved into a really awkward space. But one of the things is it has a 20 foot high back wall. And we have a student who has made a painting 20 feet high about Frida Kahlo, the great Mexican woman artist. And so that show opens on Wednesday, October 7th at 12 noon. And then on Saturday, October 17th, I'm going to be doing a workshop for the public. It's free, don't need a reservation, but it's going to be building an altar, a uh, Day of the Dead altar at the base of the Frida painting. And the workshop will be on creating sacred bundles in the tradition of honoring our ancestors, and then also the fun of decorating skull cookies like you're experiencing today. One of our culinary students has been making skull cookies this fall, and so we're going to be decorating them and talking about iconography and Day of the Dead. So please be sure to have a skull cookie before you leave. Also on that table is my personal Milagro collection, which I'll be talking about, and a retablo, and some other um, our historical artifacts. So check out the table over there as well as the amazing food over here. Okay. Um, I guess I'd like to start out this afternoon um, talking on a personal level and it's kind of a fun mom story and that might surprise some of you. Um, I had one of those sons who hated school and of course he had two parents who were professors and it was a very painful experience for him to have to go through grade school, high school, and college. But then, absolutely as a little miracle in this mom's life, my son found Benedictine University for his graduate degree. And he fell in love. 
And so I feel like I owe this lecture to Benedictine University today, right? I should, because I have gotten finally some peace of mind over this child. He's now finished his master's in clinical psychology and has become a counselor for troubled youth in a clinic in Downers Grove. But I want to tell you this because it's very connected. Um, when he was 11 months old, um, he and my ex-husband, George Liebert, who's a teacher at the Art Institute all these years as well, we were sent to Mexico. And we lived in San Miguel de Allende for four years. So the first four years of this child's life. And we ran the Mexico program for the Art Institute of Chicago. So we would be there from January through May, and we would bring down 20, 30 students from the Art Institute, and they would live in San Miguel de Allende for a semester, and we were their main English-speaking teachers, and then they would study with some others. Anyways, it was so funny, because this is very, um, this really talks about the relationship between George and I as well. So over those four years, my ex-husband collected up a mask collection and he collected up 60 wooden masks and they're they're beautiful they're beautiful and they're still in the home that the boys were raised in and so when we came back after the four years we came back with huge boxes and boxes of these hand carved wooden masks that tells you a lot about who he was what I did during that time is I collected up 66 <coughs> milagros right and I'm the kind of person who, you know, always had to feel like if I couldn't live just out of a suitcase, it wasn't good, you know. I, mean, I just had to think. So I came home with this little satchel full of 66 milagros when he had his 66 masks. And so I just think it tells us so much about us. And then I have wonderful memories of Winslow, who's my son who went here, playing with the milagros in San Miguel on my bed and taking out the horse, or taking out the little man, or the car, and playing with those, like children would do, with something that's precious. Uh, later on, I sewed the milagros into a frame, a collection, put a retablo between them, and in fact, the person I studied with in San Miguel, I studied with a retablo painter, we'll be talking about retablos, he, put, he made a beautiful frame with antique milagros on it for me because he realized I wasn't just the everyday tourist who wanted to have a little trinket to take home. This is something that over the four years I very carefully would um, pick up a milagro every special site that we went to, every sacred place. So today's kind of an interesting day for me that way. I think of Wynn as that little boy on my bed in San Miguel speaking Spanish before his parents did, because of course you know how kids pick it up. And now he's finished at um, Benedictine, and I'm very grateful. So thank you, Benedictine University. I just wanted to say that. Okay. All right, so today we're gonna talk about Milagros. And um, unusual for me, I do have some notes because the thing is I knew about them as a folk art and as a sacred art in Mexico. But I contacted the International Folk Art Museum in Santa Fe, New Mexico. I had been a visiting artist there about a year ago. And so I called back to them and said, do you have a book on Milagros? Can you tell me about your collection? Because they have fantastic collections down there. And they sent me an excellent book, and I actually got to read and learn about Milagros from nine different countries across the world. So today's lecture is not just on Mexico, but also from across the world. And then also since then, I found out they actually exist in over 22 different countries in different forms. But of course, the word Milagro is Spanish, and it means miracle or little miracle. So we'll start with uh, Mexico, and then we will move on from there. The other reason I really love Milagros is that Milagros are thank you notes. And some of you know me. I love thank you notes. I'm like really old fashioned that way, right? I really believe in thank you notes. And so we're gonna learn about amulets, we're gonna learn about talismans, we're gonna learn about other uses of Milagros. 
But the first use of the Milagro is really to say that you are going to make a promise that if something happens and then you go and you buy your Milagro and you bring it as your thank you note. It's not a bargaining chip. If you do this, I'll do that and some other uses. This is truly done from the heart. You ask for something and then it becomes your thank you note. So we're going to talk about that. Okay. Um, the first picture that we have here is talking about the word. So the word, it's actually called an ex voto, and many of you know this much better than me. I do not come from a Catholic background. I come from a Lutheran background. So we don't have quite the same terminology for things. But so uh, milagro really, an ex voto means a vow. And a vow, of course, means a promise. So when you get involved in buying a milagro, you are making a promise that you will send this little thank you note to this supreme being, to your favorite saint, to whomever you decide to make the vow to. And part of what makes them so unbelievably rich is that they go between being rich as a sacred item and then because of the repetition of how you visually see them in the churches of Mexico and Latin America, you can't help but get seduced by them visually. Because I do believe that when we see things in repetition, that repetition actually ties into our heartbeat. And so 